defense for students Ayyad Ahmed Jamaldin and Muslim Abdul Qadir entitled Numerical Implementation of Analysis and Maxima Detection Function of a Shaded Pompous Signal in Gamma Ray Spectroscopy Shape. So you have between 20 to 30 minutes to present the essential of your work. So go for it. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Mr. Abdel Kader. This is my colleague, Ahmed Jamal Ayed. We are second year master in electrical control at the University of Nihadun. Before we start, I'd like to thank the jury who come here to evaluate our work. I'd also like to give our most thanks and gratitude to our supervisor, Mr. Misa Adnan and Mr. Ahmed Sabah. I'd also like to thank our parents family, friends, for coming here to support us. I would love to let you present, we would love to let you present our uh, graduation thesis titled by the method and implementation of the analysis and maxima detection function of a shaded temporal signal in the gamma, in gamma ray spectroscopy chain. And also the device the voice. It's because it was the device of course. Speak up. Okay. So uh, to do that, we decided to, with the, to do that, we decided to start by giving an overview as an introduction, talking about the spectroscopy system change, uh, discussing the simulation, and finally showing uh, the experimental results. So, designing the spectrum requires a number of fields, including mathematics, quantum physics, uh, electronics, uh, programming, digital processing. However, our main object, our main focus on this uh, project would be the digital processing and the programming part. So probably the first question you are asking yourself is what is a gamma ray spectroscopy system? Well, basically, it is a pneumatic tool that collects and monitor data in order to provide us with the spectrum at the end. So why we, now, why we even want the spectrum or what does the spectrum represent? So in our context, a gamma ray spectrum is simply a histogram that, rep that represents the emitted number of gamma photons from each energy level that we call them channel. In other words, it shows how many counts of uh, gamma energy photons belongs to each channel. And by using this uh, spectrum, it is possible to determine the number of nuclei that emits and to characterize uh, and to characterize the composition in terms of uh, radionically present and activity. Example: the number of uh, disintegration of cell that we implemented uh, in the uh, in analog system, and therefore the system I want to work on is a uh, digital spectroscopy system. We are doing all the parts uh, together. We are going to start with the physics behind the gamma rays. So, as any electromagnetic wave, gamma rays consist of the perpendicular electric and magnetic fields that oscillate alternately at specific frequency and propagate through space at speed of uh, 3 uh, times uh, 10 power uh, 8 meters per second uh, at a specific wavelength, carrying energy in these fields, and it is called photons when viewed as a uh, particle that has uh, wavelength and, uh, wave and uh, particle-like properties. However, what characterizes the gamma rays is that it has the smallest uh, wavelengths and the most energy of any electromagnetic fields uh, of any, uh, of any uh, electromagnetic wave and the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. And now when a gamma photon is a atom, atom is transfer to the electron, causing it either to excite or ionize this atom, depending on the amount of the energy to solve light. Based on this principle, many gamma ray detectors will be found. However, when it comes to the resolution, the high purity germanium will the problem. As you can see here in the spectrum, the performance of the HPGP detector compared to other gamma ray detectors. Back to our spectroscopy chain, when we have a gamma ray source that comes from a nuclear reaction that produces a number of gamma photons. When those photons interact with the appearance of the HPTD detector, which is a semiconductor, is create a large number of electron orders, leading to a current force at the output of the circuit. That its height is directly proportional to the collective case. Now the force at the output is a low quantity to show duration cost, making it hard, if not impossible, to be processed directly. That's why we need a P amplifier to convert it to sufficient duration time needed to be processed. The amplifier used with the HPGE detector is a charge sensitive pre amplifier with a feedback capacitor that collects charge over time. Now, in case of eliminating the real feedback resistor, a step voltage is produced at the output at each input current pulse, 
forming a staircase path at each upper corresponding or upper step corresponding to the superior close until it reaches its maximum value. Therefore, a feedback resistor is needed because it works as a reason for charge sensitive probe divider and eliminate the upward step of the capacitor to the tape post. Now as you can see here, the, the output post of the PO divider, uh, the, the equation equals to E product by exponential minus T over O D minus exponential T minus T over O D for L. Where the total D is still the K time equal to RFCL and the peak value is E equal to minus E times small e over epsilon cl. Now by determining the peak value of the output post, we can easily determine the amount of the energy of the gamma photon. Well, this was the ideal case, and in reality, the preamplifier's uh, output might look something like this instead of this. And why is that? It is due that the discarded system is subject to uh, many effects and problems uh, that can be resolved in three points. So, firstly, the, el the electronic noise, uh, which comes from different external and internal source, uh, the pillar uh, effect, which is the accumulation of the pulses in high radioactivity, and finally, the ballistic deficit effect, which is uh, the term used to describe the, the high reduction and the input pulses due to, uh, due to, uh, due to the, the dissipation of the charge in the resistance era, uh, era during uh, the charge connection of the capacitor CR. CF, so this problem, uh, this problem led to a measurement error, leading uh, finally to a uh, poor, uh, poor uh, energy resolution in the final spectrum. And as expected, the research of the problem solution to solve, or let's say to reduce, uh, uh, to reduce this problem, uh, like using shaping filter, such as uh, triangular uh, filter, spike filter, filter, Gaussian filter. However, the one we are going to use in our, uh, in our study is the particle filter. So, now I should take a, uh, I should, uh, take a break to tell you about our objectives. So, what we are going to do, because our work will start from here and so on. So, what I want to do is first understanding, designing, and analyzing the digital particle filter optimizing the hardware design of our trapezoidal filter, developing by ourselves the maximum detection algorithm, providing and developing our own design for algorithm, uh, an algorithm for the multi-channel analyzer, <coughs> reaching, uh, uh, reaching uh, an efficient design using the system on chip technology, programming our own software uh, code and the graphical user interface that display the spectrum, and finally implement uh, our work experimentally in reality. So, let's back to our Tarkozida filter. Now, using the Tarkozida filter allows to correct the, the ballistic deficit effect, increase the signal to noise ratio, and separate the pillar pulses, and therefore uh, 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 let, uh, increase the, the, resolution, the energy resolution of the final output and the pulses through. And we are going to perform that. So, this, this, here, this picture here, you can see the, the ideal case where we see the, the ideal shape of the Tarkozida filter with the ideal shape of the input pulse. However, the ballistic deficit, uh, the high use uh, the input pulse is, is translated to a deformation and the opposite of output, but uh, the flat on still uh, converge to the real uh, to the real height of the input pulses. And uh, when choosing uh, when choosing the, the appropriate value of A and B parameter. In pillar effect, and when choosing small values of A and B, the trapezoidal outputs can't end before the, the, the second uh, the field up process occurs, uh, and therefore even the field up process can be filtered and used in court. Uh, and also, in addition, it also provides us with, uh, with an output that has a low, uh, 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 low mode. So, Let's switch to the mathematical side. Designing the digital shaping filter, which in our case is this digital filter, consists of two things, namely parameter and deriving the discrete transfer function. Let's start with the transfer function, which is simply the ratio between the output, which is the output, and the input, which is the post from the input. The equation of the input is as follows. That could be simplified to E times exponential minus T over 40. The comparison in the Z domain by 
e times 1 over 1 minus beta z power minus 1, where beta is equal to exponential minus delta t over 2d, and delta t is simply the same in time. Now let's go back to the output. The output is set, the output trapezoidal is synthesized by the sum of four terms, v1, v2, v3, and v4. That could be written by v1 minus v1 delayed by t1 minus v1 delayed by t2 plus v1 delayed by t3. Now the linear function of v1 is expressed in the time and z domain as follows. In time domain it is equal to e over t1 all times t. Applying the z transform, it uh, gives us uh, the multiplication of two terms, e over a and z over z minus 1 all power by 2. Now as you can see here, the n duration of a uh, of the trapezoidal is uh, a is the a duration of the trapezoidal and b is the plot of duration. The both expressed by the simple time delta t. Now the three other linear process can be expressed in the function of v1 as follows. v2 equal to minus v1 z power minus a. v3 equal to minus v1 z minus a plus b. v4 equal to v1 z minus 2a plus b. Where in case of the symmetrical charges with a future, we will get t1 equal to a delta t, t2 equal to a plus b delta t, and t3 equal to 2a plus b delta t. Now substituting this previous calculation, we get us the following formula. Now, now this formula can be simplified to the to multiplicing four terms. Uh, e over a, 1 minus z power minus a, and 1 minus z power minus a plus b, and z minus 1 over 1 minus z minus 1, all power by 2. Now, the, our transfer function, it is simply the reaction between the equation of the output over the input. Now, using this transfer function, we can split our tensor into, uh, into uh, four stages that perform different functionality. You can see here the four stages and the following uh, the table in terms of the, the figure shows the function. So stage one gives an input output, stage two gives a rectangular output, stage three gives a propositional output, and finally stage four gives a normalized propositional output. And by uh, by performing the recursive formula for each stage, we can perform our uh, our uh, digital uh, propositional filter. However, in reality. The propositional filters still suffer from some problems like baseline drift and the existence of DC offset as its output. And to solve that, there are also many techniques can be used to reduce or to solve this problem, such as uh, using the uh, SQ filter to remove the baseline drift or, or using uh, uh, this uh, baseline correction over time at the output of the filter to remove the, the, to remove the DC offset. Now let's back to our trapezoidal filter. Now after having the trapezoidal filter, the next step, the next step is to measure its height, which is, as we said before, proportional to the energy produced by the incident total. So to do that, we are going to use the, the algorithm described describe in this uh, box schemes here. So this is what we, this algorithm will first detect the appropriate region to measure the height, and then it will take a number of average samples that uh, belongs to that uh, region to, uh, to calculate the height, which we really call it the maximum value. And here are the steps to do that. So first, we will calculate the derivative of the trapezoidal filter, which, can be, which uh, we can see in uh, this uh, picture here. And later on, it will uh, detect when the first negative signs appear in the, uh, in the derivative, which means the only trapezoidal filter. Then we detect the appropriate region uh, to measure the height. Uh, you can see here the appropriate region to measure the height. Then finally, it takes the average of a number of samples that belong to that region, which is at the end of the flat hole to avoid the, uh, the elastic deficit effect. Now, now after having, uh, now in reality, we will have a uh, uh, gamma ray source is having a number of photons. And having a number of photons means having a number of pulses and therefore having, uh, having a number of maxima values. So we will have to, now this maxima, this, this number of maxima value will be classified by quantum channel analyzer using, uh, using uh, a RAM where each, uh, each detected maxima value 
will uh, will be stored in the RAM. So the address will uh, each address in the RAM will uh, which will represent the, the channel value and uh, it will store the number of counts. However, I, I forgot to mention uh, something. <coughs> so I will make some. After having this uh, this maximum value, it will be classified using a multi-channel analyzer, where as we, as I said, uh, each uh, each map each uh, using the number each uh, each address in the RAM represents the channel and store the value that belong to that channel. And there, uh, big process to perform this operation, which will be discussed in the simulation part. To more understand and analyze the simulation in the lab our simulation consists of three parts. The first part is the calls generated by the field amplifier and the HPG detector. The second part is the automatization of the first line DC. Now these two parts and how to create them more detailed in thesis in details. Our main focus will be on the digital processing of the digitalized uh, output of the ADC. Let's perform the digital transmission filter to the input pass, calculate the maxima, classifying the maxima, then send the data to the processing system that was not simulated in MATLAB. Now, because our implementation will be on the FPGA, we're not going to use simulated building mode, but we are going to use simulation blocks that came from uh, DSP system generated and started by Vivaldo. That makes it easier for us to generate and optimize. Uh, VHDA code uh, after we are done with our design and test. Now the digital transmission filter consists of four stages that are connected by the recursive formula derived earlier. Now before we go any further, the we need to there are something to uh, analyze first, which is the quantization error analysis. Now the now, uh, to save the resources in the FPGA, the parameters set at the binary output form need to be chosen optimally in such a way that the error at the output is mainly caused by the quantization of the best ATC. Now, not, now, to, now why is that? Now, to any arithmetic operation or quantization operation uh, don't affect the output. Now to do that, we need a full analysis on the four previous stages on the precision and the quantization error in such a way that doesn't affect the output. Now uh, this part here and uh, the equation and the calculation was detailed in the, uh, the part of the simulation in the thesis in detail. Another thing to be noted with the limited resources of the APGA. We uh, implemented a large delay line, user ramps, and the uh, counter instead of resistance. The next stage is the multi channel analyzer, which performs the maxima detection, the counting, the classifying of the maxima, then send the result to the processing system. The algorithm behind this multi channel analyzer was described by my friend earlier. Now, uh, the simulation it consists of three main parts. The first part is calculate the derivative of the Chapit wheel and extract the MSB bits, which would be one when the derivative is negative. That's in the point of the traffic, the traffic with edge. Now calculating the derivative is uh, done by sending two samples spread by ten samples each other instead of one. A low pass filter and a logical uh, operation and this, uh, this operation is done twice just to uh, decrease the chance of having a negative default detected caused by noise. Our results will be as follows. In the left we can see the traffic speed and output shape uh, after passing by the four stages. In the right it is the multi-channel analyzer. When we set seven courses, two courses, O12, volt, three courses, O15 volt, and two other courses, O18 volt. Now as you can see here, the multi-channel analyzer count and classify the peaks correctly. Now, now let's switch to the most important part, which is the experimental part. So for the experimental part, we have uh, done two, uh, two setups. In, the, in setup one, the exponential decay uh, the exponential decay part that simulates uh, the preamplifier output was generated using uh, this space. However, later on, we switched on using uh, programmable function generator to produce uh, this part. So. So, and the concept of uh, both setup is still the same uh, the, gener the generated pulse is uh, read by a fast uh, ADC to give its values to the Z board where the FPGA part is uh, performed all the, the hard 
for the budget, for the operation that needs uh, a lot of uh, calculations and gives the result to the processing system that uh, uh, transfer the result from the FEG to our computer that contain uh, software designed to display uh, the histogram to represent the spectrum. So what is that? Well, it is, uh, it is a low cost evaluation and development form that contains everything necessary to, uh, uh, to, to have uh, Windows, Linux, Android or any, other, you know, or any other operation system design. And it also, it also has uh, many components and uh, very large uh, that we will not discuss them here. Now the main component of the Z-Water is the Zinc uh, 7000 system on chips, which combines uh, uh, an IRM, core IRM Cortex i9 CPU uh, that represents uh, the PS unit, which, is, which can, uh, which can uh, and, and, uh, implement uh, 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 complex operations, operating systems, and combined with Xenix ATX uh, 7 FPGA, which represents the PL unit, to provide us with uh, to, uh, to design uh, a high a high and unique efficient design and for that we are going to combine both the PL and uh, PS part when PL part is used to uh, generate a 50 megahertz clock with the ATC platform the digital processing and uh, send the result uh, to the, uh, the PC part in uh, the form of uh, uh, 26 bits and then the PS part will read the values and send them to our uh, lab. Now the, the axis 3 interface, which is a parallel hyper from the synchronous high frequency and multi packet uh, communication interface, specifically the axis 3 uh, is used to transfer the data from the PL to PS uh, in one direction through one channel and in high speed. Now let's go to the, the programming part. So, uh, programming the Z-board by programming the, the FPGA part and the processing system part. For the FPGA part, we are going to use the Vivado block design where, where we are using the uh, built-in function that already exists in Vivado plus the, the, the generated IP by one <laughs> And for the PS part, we are using the SDK tool, uh, the SDK tool programming programming it in, in uh, C language. Then finally, uh, another, uh, another software in our computer using the process speaker, which is coded with the uh, processing language based on Java. Java. So, Java. So, let's, let's now back to our uh, setup one. So, this is the composite that uh, result uh, in reality using the setup one for small and uh, high amplitude. And as you can see, the transposition fit uh, shape is not exactly as expected and that is due to the, the, the bad shape of the generated parts by the, the displays. And by the way, we designed another uh, port in the FPGA to, to be able to do this uh, signals where we store the unique parts and the RAM and read it again and again. As uh, uh, they are so fast and we can read them in real time. Well, now let's go, however, in setup one, the result was uh, was a pretty good. So as you can see here, here are the results, the same thing for small and high amplitude. And the composite uh, looks like, uh, uh, looks pretty good. And that is due to, to the smooth uh, well shape generated by the programmable function generator. Later on, we also uh, provide you with some tests for setup one and for setup two uh, that show the final spectrum for uh, for fixing the uh, number of stereo peaks at a specific uh, at a specific amplitude for small and uh, big amplitude. The same thing for uh, setup two. And if you uh, and if you compare the values of the channel, you will notice that setup two give a lot better uh, result as it already provides us with a well shaped composite uh, output. Also, we have done another test just to ensure that they are not counting loose during uh, the functionality by recording the uh, number of series pulses uh, for a specific uh, time and comparing the expected result by the test result. And there is some uncertainty which is only caused uh, by uh, our not precise of using the chronometer to start and stop. Now, in summary, for the purpose of designing the digital nuclear spectrometer for a gamma array that are usually emitted during the nuclear reaction. 
We took into account the phenomena that affect the accuracy of the measurement, such electronic noise, drastic defects, and collapse effect in high radioactivity by digitally, by digitally processing the received signal from the sensor. Therefore, to build our own gamma ray spectrometer, we start by designing digital chubby filter, developing our own algorithm for maximum detection and building a design for the multi-channel analyzer. Then programming our own software code and a graphical user interface for displaying the spectrum and finally implemented our work in reality. Now to do that, we pass through a lot of difficulties and countless of tests. There are other ways to do this and other techniques that could perform better, but it was satisfying with the results that we, had, we have achieved. However, the next step in the project is to test it with a real code that comes from a preoccupier perceived by the HPGE detector. And for the future work, we can use an advanced techniques to make the system more efficient and faster in displaying and sending data using interrupt, for example. And that will bring us to the, the end. So thank you all for present attention and for being here. And I give the skill to our patient, uh, here. So uh, thank you for the presentation, you, you did very well. Thank you for the presentation, and thank you and congratulations for the quality of the manuscript, which is a uh, clean and clean uh, manuscript, so congratulations. I have a series of uh, questions, not too much, but five or six questions. First one, uh, I want to ask you about how a photo is a physical light. How a photo is transformed into an electrical signal. In gamma ray, it's something white. What was that? How a photo uh, can be transformed into an electrical signal. Yeah. And when the photo, uh, when the gamma photon hit the pressure region of the HPGE detector, which is a semiconductor, it creates a large electron corpus. That electron corpus, when uh, they pass by uh, electrical field, it creates uh, a current pulse. The electrical shocks or electrons are collected by the electrical field and are drained by the electrons. Uh, the electrons? Yes. Uh, are drained by the and uh, what's the nature of the semiconductor you are using? Or you are usually use in the uh, What? Can you, you ask me The nature of the semiconductor. Germanium. Germanium. It's, it's, it's a high purity. High purity. Why especially, uh, or specifically high purity Germanium? Uh, it performs better than uh, other detectors. Uh, but why? It has uh, low length of mentioned it, uh, it can learn it easily can provide a, a hole, a pair of uh, electrons and a hole. Yeah, but uh, not only that. Why specifically high purity remote? The reason, more important reason. Why specifically high purity for that? The cooling? No, not the cooling part. Because of the higher atomic uh, number, which increases the, uh, the probability of gamma photon interaction. Yes, but the, the, the real big reason, or the main reason, is to use uh, high purity of mind. Uh, it does contain uh, too much default, uh, too much fat. Uh, because when you generate electron uh, uh, ions, there is uh, when we generate a from pair, if the semiconductor contains too much shipping before, the whole of an electron are taken by the car. And we use some quantity of the electrons. 
and it will spawn the after the edge points. So what you need to do in the artwork is not really the, the real concept of electrons generated by the, the summary. Didn't know this
vous pouvez ajouter tout ce que vous voulez. Vous devez aller à l'envers par tel tel, sans système d'exploitation. Et vous pouvez l'utiliser avec une autre qui est de... Le système SD card, le système de système d'exploitation. SD card. SD card. Le système d'exploitation. 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 So 
on the fact the output of the system. <laughs> So, uh, before uh, passing uh, to your supervisor, it's my turn. But I try to be not uh, So, first, uh, I want to congratulate students for their hard work. It's, uh, I really appreciate it. So, uh, it's the most, uh, it was not uh, easy for them. Uh, they had to learn uh, many tools, many new tools. So, and we will see all the results. We will, of course, it's not easy to deal with the speaker uh, or scopy because there is a physical part and uh, genetic engineering. Uh, my first comment is in uh, the writing of your manuscript. I think uh, the good thing about your manuscript when you uh, read, you feel that you, uh, this is your own uh, sentence. Yes. But uh, it is uh, some uh, need of the object because when you put that it's not uh, in the context of something like So I will uh, give uh, one of the examples. So, for uh, example, in the general introduction. So uh, uh, in this thesis that is divided into four chapters. In, one, uh, in chapter one, we talk. Uh, I prefer to use discuss, describe, and present, but we talk. We talk. But there is many, 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 many uh, words used in this uh, context, like we talk, we gave, we. So we can pass with the uh, uh, other words, which is uh, something has a, a good meaning. Okay. But, uh, so try to advise uh, your mind if you have uh, special security in uh, English or Python. For the question, I have uh, one or uh, uh, two questions. Uh, first question is the provisional shape of the linear. Is this, is this linear or not? Linear. Linear, yes. Is it a some of them have to go in here or more than this. This is some. As you know, the, the linearity has to, to satisfy its condition. Two conditions, yes. Open student. 
Zatim gledamo se na tipologiji fikir. Zatim je i problem, i da fajte des efforts, on dra dans l'écran, ils ont des ressources pour le faire. Alhamdulillah, sur 20 raisons de formation, on a parlé de Ayad ou Rabbi Ahmed ou de tout Ayad ou de Chat, on n'a jamais eu un étudiant aussi brillant depuis les 20 raisons au groupe de base depuis l'histoire du département de génie. Yeah. Uh...